day and night. such a time as this, the day we come to bid farewell, say good, good night to a dear brother and a dear friend, loved one. And we're going to ask that we would follow uh, the service as it has been printed. Uh, our prayer is coming from Pastor George Brooks, Sr., after which we will have a selection from Free Spirit. And then we'll have our scripture reading. Our Old Testament scripture will be coming from Reverend Curry Quarter. And the New Testament will be coming from Minister Sonia Johns. And then we will continue on after, after that. Uh, and then we'll come back with a selection from our, our sister, Angela Dowdy Boyd. Amen. 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 God bless you. As they are coming, uh, we've been informed that uh, two of the singers from a free spirit are not here yet. So if they're not here, uh, we'll have a, uh, we'll move the choir up and let them uh, do a song. And then, then we'll come back after uh, the reading of, I mean, after the song with Sister Angie. Is that okay? Amen. God bless you. At this time, we're going to ask that uh, Reverend Brooks, are you here? Amen. I mean, well, we're going to move on. I, I, I'm going to apologize because I would have read the scripture. I don't see too well anymore, so I don't want to mess up nothing. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask that that uh, uh, they will come with our scripture read, Old Testament and New Testament scriptures. After Old Testament and New Testament, then we'll hear from uh, our sister, uh, Sister Angela Dowdy Boyd. Amen. 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 And listen, let me say this while I'm standing here. I'm not here for no solemn uh, 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 home, home born service. I'm here for a celebration. We are here for a celebration. Now, if you didn't come to celebrate, get out of the other folks' way so that they can go ahead on and do what they need to do, and that's celebrate the life of James D. Witt Johnson. Amen. Amen. And though, though the folks are not here in order, we're going to have our order. Amen. So, so I might as well rebuke the devil right now and let him know that no weapon that's formed against us is going to prosper. Not up in the air. Let the church say amen. I'm here to celebrate too. Amen. Amen. Celebrate Dee Dee's life. Yeah. Amen. From a long time ago. Amen. Now, the Old Testament uh, scripture will be coming from Psalms 23. Yeah. Amen. Which reads, The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yes, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley 
of the shadow of death. I will not fear. Hey, watch out now. I didn't mean to do all that. Mm. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The word of God for the people. I'll be reading from the New Testament, from John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God, for the people of God. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Truly we thank and praise God. Hold on just a minute, Angela. All right, free spirit is, is in the building. So we're going to go with free spirit. Then we'll come back with, with our, uh, the next move. And I, what I'll do, I just, if pastor is not here, I'll go on and do the prayer after this. Is that okay with you all? Amen. Okay, all right. Come on, free spirit.
That is crazy. Lord, we thank you to you for this privilege to pray. Thank you so much for being our God. And thank you for loving us in such a way that you would give us a D. Witt Johnson to live among us. Many of us only think of DeWitt as a musician and a singer. But thank you that you gave in DeWitt a connector, not just one who connects people with God, but one who connects people with people. We thank you so much that you gave us the privilege of getting to know some of the people we know and having the privilege to sing with some of the people with whom we sing because D. Witt Johnson came our way. Thank you for giving D. Witt such a lasting memory. For every time a choir sings there, First song in worship, glad to be in this service. DeWitt will be alive and well in our worship. But more importantly, we thank you for providing DeWitt with a better place to live. He lived in his body for a long time. But now he lives eternally with Jesus Christ. Thank you that you did not allow him to die in a hospital, but you allowed him to die in the Lord. For you inspired John the Revelator to write, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Henceforth, yet the spirit that they rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Again, thank you for James D. Witt Johnson. Comfort and encourage each of us who will cherish his memory for many years to come. Bless and encourage his family as you encourage each one of them. I pray that they would be an encouragement for someone else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time we'll receive Sister Angela Dowdy Boyd, amen, after which we'll come back and have our <coughs> obituary read that South Music. Sister Angela. By D. Witt. I was young, I was about 14 years old, and uh, my lovely aunt used to take me to uh, the club. That's where I first started singing. And then my aunt got with Larry, Larry Boyd, and I got introduced to a new way of gospel. I'd always been in the church, but uh, I learned about a new way of gospel. And guess what? And it tasted so good. And many of these people here, I remember D. Witt. Uh, bringing me on Shelby. It was a church out there on Shelby. And I met many of these gospel greats to stand behind me. And I aspired to be like many of you all and then had the pleasure to work with one of you all, to which I loved very much. Amen. I'm going to tell this little story about DeWitt before I get started, if you don't mind, Nate. Um, never thinking back then that my um, future husband would be DeWitt's brother, Roderick. So Dewey came over for dinner one day, and I told, you know, my, my husband, I, I bought some dishes. Y'all remember um, uh, 
uh, what's the name of this? Um, oh, goodness. It, uh, y'all remember Kmart? How many of y'all remember Kmart? Yeah. And I bought these pretty dishes from Kmart, and I said, you know what? We're going to eat on dishes. But my husband had other things on his mind, and he says, he, pu- he pulls out the paper pipes. I said, I'm not eating on them. So I went all off, went all off. And I was like, I'm not eating on them. And DeWitt, after everything was said and done, DeWitt said, well, Ann, that was mighty ignorant of you the way you acted. <laughs> and it was just some of the way he said, mighty ignorant. And, you know, it was never ignorant because, you know, I'm an English major. So, you know, it, it was never ignorant. You know, when it's real indignant the way you act, that was mighty ignorant. And it made me feel real, real bad. But then I, when I looked up, guess who was eating on the plates that I had just got? He didn't eat off of those darn plastic plates. He got him a real plate. And I looked at him and I said, now, who's body ignorant? <laughs> but that's the story that I have to do with that I wanted to share with you all. Uh, he had his own little way. I was asked the other day to bring a selection, and he sings this at every, uh, every funeral. And I thought, okay, I'm going to try it. And if I get a blessing, I, I, I get a blessing. But I'm going to do my very best. And that song is Bottom to the Top. Daddy's name was Jesse, and their mama's name was Pearl. They didn't have much and very little to eat. But somehow God provided clothes and shoes for their feet. They brought them from the bottom. They came from a place called the bottom. Ten boys in one girl. Their daddy's name was Jesse. And their mama was named her. They didn't have much. And very little to eat. But somehow God provided clothes and shoes for their feet. Brought him from the bottom to the top. Oh, I brought him to the top.
going to stand here no two or three minutes while y'all read. Y'all done had it long enough to read. A amen. Amen. I don't want uh, Pastor Mitchell to throw no rocks at me, so make sure I move this program right on along. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm going to say this while y'all are reading. I had Nine brothers and one sister. Every one of them was unique in their own way. And when we would act foolish with one another, D wit was what I called the man that always put us back together. I don't care how mad you got at one another. He would have had a way of coming to your house and telling you what you needed to do. And I thank God for D. Witt. And I used to... I followed D. Witt everywhere he went that I thought I could follow him. I would go. Amen. One... Never will forget the year. Y'all remember this? 1977. We went to California. I drove him across country with a with a whole group. Diane Hill and all of us. And, and it was it was really a blessing. And and he asked me, he said, how much is it gonna cost me? I said, a pack of cigarettes some toothpicks and a place to lay my head and don't forget the food. <laughs> and we had a great time. Y'all finished reading y'all obituary? Hey, hey Amen. It's this time. We're going to ask the brother Lawrence Thompson to come and bless us. After which we'll have our acknowledgments acknowledgments and resolutions which will be read and presented to us by, by Sandra Chapman. Amen? Amen. Amen. After that, we shall return. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Am I right? Regardless what we're going through, God is good, and he knows what he's doing. I'm going to do a song that uh, usually sing at funeral. It's a little medley. The I'll fly away. And then, oh, I want to see him. How many want to see Jesus? Don't fool me now. Do you want to see him? Listen. Some glad morning. When this life is over, yes, I fly away. I'm going to a home on God, celestial shore.
Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5 and 4. 
Once again, the ebb and flow of this life has moved from high tides of joy into a lower tide of grief. Thus, in this, another episode of human mortality, we gather to shoulder one another's sadness and assist in the endurance of these expected, yet never easily embraced moments. Be it resolved that we, the First Baptist Church family, express our deepest thoughts of love, compassion, and sympathy to the family of Minister James DeWitt Johnson in this hour of sorrow. May the God of everlasting comfort bring sustain and consolation to your heart in this hour of bereavement. Remember that our God will never leave or forsake you, but will guide you to, into a place of peace according to God's will. Do not lose heart as those who have no hope, but remember that in this interlude of human mortality is hurriedly giving away to a greater and eternal homecoming. Therefore, let us face the dust of another human life, being fully assured of the words of God's promise, that those who die in the Lord are at peace, free from the troubles of this life, and resting in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, until we shall meet them again in heaven. Humbly submitted, Reverend James M. McCarroll, Jr., Pastor. Resolution. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then we shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 54, 55, and 57. Whereas it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to call from time to eternity on Friday, August the 11th, the much beloved Minister James DeWitt Johnson. Be it resolved that in his death, the body of Christ has sustained a loss felt especially by members of our church family, Deacon Reginald and Mrs. John, June Johnson. We also acknowledge other family members, including those who have worshiped among us in times past and express our heartfelt sympathy to the entire family at this time. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Be it resolved that Minister DeWood Johnson passing reminds us that we are in this world for a limited time. And with the breath of an infant, began the race to the grave that every one of us must run. We bow in humble submission to God our Father, who never makes a mistake with the timing of his call home. For the word of God, we find reason to rejoice. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Romans 5, 1 and 2. Be it resolved that we humbly, hereby humbly, to all his relatives and closest friends, our sincere prayers of comfort and peace. We count ourselves among the many benefactors of his friendship and musical gifting. Sing for joy, O heaven, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will, will with compassion upon his afflicted. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a permanent reminder of the honorable place Minister James D. Witt Johnson holds in our heart. Prophetess Bernita Smith as pastor. 
Scott's Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. If I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, I shall see the great king in his beauty. If for Christ I proclaim the glad story, if I seek for his ship gone astray, I will sure I will show his glory. He's the dearest of ties we must serve him, and tears of sorrow are ever, every day. But no sickness nor sign forever, if I earnestly strive and have tried all his will to obey. T'will enhance all the rapture of heaven when I've gone the last mile of the way. Whereas the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, righteousness from the God of our salvation, for everyone who exalts him will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Thus we come in thanksgiving to celebrate the home going of our beloved brother D. Witt Johnson, who has found rest with Christ. Be it resolved that we will ever remember Brother D. Witt Johnson and how gladly his daily life gave evidence that the fact that he believed God's word and followed his guidance. God feels your pain and he understands your sorrow. We thank God for the stewardship of Brother D. Witt Johnson in the ministry of To the family, while we know that his presence will be missed, we commend you to Jesus, knowing God is able. May God continue to bless and keep you, wrap his healing arms around each of you, and strengthen your faith and trust in him. Calvary, sell it all. Amen. Humbly submitted, Reverend Dennis Lawson, pastor. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them that love his appearance. 2 Timothy 4, 6-8. On Friday, August 11th, God in his infinite wisdom and divine love has called from our midst our beloved minister, James D. Witt Johnson, home to be with him throughout eternity. Whereas D. Witt, as he was called, loved the all-forgiving presence of God from his earliest days and strove to exhibit these same qualities of compassion, humbleness, and love throughout his life with a cheerful smile. Whereas DeWitt served for many years at the Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church and worked with the choir number one, youth chorale, the voices, and the mass choir, and the male chorus. Even though his ministry and travel took him away, but he always would return to be in fellowship in this house and with, the God, and with God's people. Minister DeWitt was always willing to serve and assist wherever he was needed. Whereas the death of DeWitt does not diminish the profound benediction of a life lived in godly service, nor our admiration of and affection for DeWitt's example of friendship and love. Be it resolved that we, the pastor, ministers, deacon, and the entire Mount Gilead family embrace the Johnson and Boyd family in our common bond of grief and remembrance of a beloved soul and servant of God. We bow in acceptance of the perfection of God's plan to gather each of us into the merciful hand which we have fulfilled when our task on this side is ended. Lovingly submitted Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church, 
I would like to acknowledge other resolutions that we've received, the Volunteer State Mass Choir, Beverly Crawford Ministries, Greater Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Jimmy Hubbard, Greater Love Assembly Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Marilyn McLean Pastor. And as a tribute, I'd like to leave you with this. Of a beautiful thing in life, the most beautiful thing is character. He who possesses a beautiful character is worthy of notice. A beautiful life is the fruit of a beautiful character. He whom we memorize here at this time possessed a beautiful character and lived a beautiful life. He died a beautiful death. He of whom I speak is Minister James DeWitt D.D. Johnson. James Cleveland said, if anyone would ever write my life story, for whatever reason there might be, today I would like to take time to tell you this story. DeWitt lived his story and sung the life he lived. His song from the bottom to the top told of his humble beginnings, how his father Jesse and his mother Pearl raised ten boys and one girl with love and placed a calling on their lives. Dewitt had a talent for music at an early age. I was told that many nights after a funeral at Mount Gilead, everyone had gone home and the church was locked up. DeWitt and Leon Corder and other musicians could be heard late over in the night playing music at Old Mount Gilead. That's how much they love their music. DeWitt co-organized the BCNM Choir and Song with the Johnson Ensemble. This afforded him the opportunity to travel many places, telling the world that things have got to get better. I keep holding his hand. Stand up and be counted. Giving my life to God. And oh, how I love Jesus. And be it done for you. Thou art holy. God is working on your case. And I owe it all to God. His talent for music as a musician, writer, and producer reached different genres. His story of down home church, didn't you love that blues tone? Other lines of his life he penned in this song. He touched me. I've been touched. I made a vow. Sing that Jesus song. Calvary sell it all. He gave us the very best that he had. So now, Dewey is saying, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened in my life. I was glad to be in God's service, and now God has given me victory, for I have done your will, and nothing has the Lord withheld from me. So now the curtain of my life is closed, and all I can say is hallelujah. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to make ready for another solo. And Pastor, Sister, my lovely woman and wife, Marilyn Boyd, is coming. I just want to say that DeWitt was my closest brother-in-law, amen. And um, he would always take me, if it wasn't in a car, traveling to go sing with him, because he traveled a lot. Or he would get to where he was going, he would send me a ticket and tell me to come be with him. So I had a great opportunity to go many places that I would not have 
gone. So I just want to thank and praise God for DeWitt. I'm going to attempt to sing a song. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Troubles of this world. Troubles of this world. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going home to live with God. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Troubles of the world. Trouble of this world. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going home to live with God no more. That's why I'm not a singer. This time we're going to make ready for words of comfort. Words of comfort. Two minutes, please. We don't want to tax this family any more than, we're, than where they are right now. We're going to go in this order. Pastor Sam Corley is going to come from the Miracle Emotions Church. After that, Pastor Dennis Lawson from Scott's Chapel AME. And then we're gonna let Bishop Frederick Barr from Life, Life Church close out our words of comfort, after which the mass choir is gonna come and bless us with selections after that, we're going to hear from our eulogist and pastor, Brianna's Mitchell Senior. Amen. 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 And I won't be back. I won't be back. I won't be back. <laughs> no more. We are very glad to be here today with you all in this great celebration. I wondered how you would all accept us. Um, Brother DeWitt accepted us right off. We was, uh, I was sitting before I was married to Deborah. Um, we, I was sitting in church and I said, 
to her, who is that guy playing that piano? And she said, you don't know him? I said, no. She said, that's DeWitt Johnson. She said, I've been singing with him for 10 years. That was 20 years ago. And she said, why do you want to know? And I said, because I'm going with him someplace. <laughs> the Lord has brought us a long ways, all of us. I, I notice if you have your order of service, uh, they, they don't have my name down here, but they put me in the spot where there's two minutes, please. So if you listen fast, I'll talk fast. <laughs> I will tell you this, I told DeWitt Johnson, 15 years ago I said, you're gonna be on worldwide television before this is over with. And I can tell you since May of this year, May, June, July, and August, that DeWitt Johnson's program that we call Touching the World has been on now television around the world. Now going into over 285 million homes around the world. And Deborah and I are glad to be part of that. Now, I figured that you would remember us some way, and, um, and I thought one way you would remember us is the next time you take communion. If you never remember us again, the next time you take communion, you remember us. When you pick up that cup, then you get that cracker. You will never forget us. You will dream about us. Hallelujah. We was in our, our Bible study the other morning and I read a scripture that I've read many times, but I never, it never hit me. You, you preachers know what I'm talking about. You read a scripture and then all of a sudden, man, the Holy Ghost hits you. And it comes out of the book of Psalms. David said in Psalms 116, 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I stopped our, our, our Bible study and I said, I don't know why, but I never understood that. But he said, it was precious in his sight because when death comes, the work is finished. And for you folks that don't understand us black folks, <laughs> the biggest problem we got on planet Earth is race. And DeWitt's race is over. You'll get that about three o'clock in the morning. Get over with your race. There's only one heaven. There's only one God. There's only one church. We are the church, can you say amen? The lady said a while ago in Timothy 4 and 7, I have fought a good fight. I don't want to read all of Romans, but go home and read chapter 8. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption under the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling birth pains fall for this earth. I'm getting ready to leave planet earth. I said, I'm getting ready to leave planet earth. 
So I said, Deborah, I said, I want you to go up there because I'm really nervous. And she said, I don't want to say nothing. I said, you don't have to. She said, I don't, I'm not going to say nothing. And I said, just stand up there because I'm nervous. Is your microphone on just in case we sing something? Because I've got to do this right here. Is that on now? There it is. Okay, listen. This is a song that DeWitt and I and Sister Deborah sang. And we're going to start a cappella if you guys can find us somewhere in the crack. <laughs> we'll be there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He's coming again. Hallelujah. I don't know just when. Hallelujah. I'm looking for him. Just in a moment, he's coming again. Hallelujah. He's coming again. Hallelujah. I don't know just when. Hallelujah. I'm looking for him. Just in a moment, he's coming again. Some people go round, some here and some there. They're looking for answers, his glory to share. In a world of confusion, in a time of despair, there's only one answer and he'll soon be here. Hallelujah, he's coming again. Hallelujah, I don't know just when. Hallelujah, I'm looking for him. Just in a moment, he's coming again. Just in a moment, he's I've always been told that in a service of this nature, that the service should always reflect the characteristics of the decedent. And if you knew Brother DeWitt, you could hear him crying, glory, glory, glory. Can somebody just shout glory? If I can help somebody, as I travel yeah. along, if I can cheer somebody yeah. with a word or song, if I can show somebody yeah. he is traveling wrong, yeah. then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian ought, if I can bring back beauty to a world uproar, if I can spread love's message, that the master taught, then my living shalt not be in vain. I bid you grace, mercy, and peace on behalf of the Scotch Chapel Amy Church. When hymnologist Amma Brazil and Drazo compose the lyrics, if I can help somebody, I have to wonder if she had our friend and loved one, Minister James DeWitt Johnson, in mind. Today we honor the legacy of one who served God, his church, family, friends, community, and all of whom he came in contact with faithfully. And as we reflect upon his life on today, we are particularly aware of the noble words of Paul the Apostle. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. 
Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only me, but all who loved his appearance. Like Paul, brother DeWitt fought the good fight and kept the faith. And if there was one word that could describe DeWitt Johnson, it would be faithful. He was faithful and you could count on him to do just what he said he would do. Not only was he faithful, but he believed and put in forth his very best. As a reward for his faithfulness, we trust today that as a fellow heir of salvation with Paul and all of the saints who have gone before him, that he's resting until that day when he shall receive the crown of righteousness and hear the Lord say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. If I could help somebody. Yes, Brother DeWitt was a man of great faith in our Lord and Savior. In fact, he leaves to us a legacy of faith and goodwill. I have no doubts that there are those in this community and far belong who loves Christ because Brother DeWitt loved Christ. I believe there are those of us who cling to the promises of the cross because Brother DeWitt clung to those promises. If I could help somebody as I pass along. For the past three years, Brother DeWitt served as church musician at Scott's Chapel. I can see him now as he entered the sanctuary with this trench-like coat pulled tightly around him up to his ears, I'm looking like a secret agent as he seemingly floating down the aisle with this stern look on his face. But underneath that stern look, there was kindness, gentleness, encouragement. Underneath that look, there was love, wisdom, and knowledge. It seemed like with one swift motion, he would pull off that coat, be on the piano, his fingers melodiously touching the piano keys as he began playing getting the church ready for worship. If I can help somebody through his musical talents, he was always ready to lift others up all over the world. And he was willing to share those talents with whomever, whether big or small. Now the Scotch Chapel family often refers to themselves as the little church by the roadside. There are those with Brother DeWitt's talents and experiences who would not step foot in the little church by the road, but not DeWitt Johnson. He didn't see a little church, but he saw a church with a great big spirit. All I had to do was just text him each week with the hymn, the scripture, and sermon title and on Sunday morning he would have the choir ready to sing with songs that went hand in hand with the scripture and the sermon. He was indeed a, a pastor's musician. Now I'm not one of those pastors bishop that think everybody comes to hear me preach. Some come to hear the word in music and brother D. Whit ministered faithfully and it didn't matter the size of the congregation. And through, though although he lived in all of his accomplishments, he wasn't afraid to speak up when others simply shut up. He wasn't afraid to stand up when others chose to sit down. He gave unselfishly with his heart, his talents, and his resources. In the words of poet T. Hollis Epton, I stand upon the seashore, a ship by my side. Her white sails in the morning breeze move softly out to the blue ocean. The ship is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and look at it until it hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and sky comes to mingle with another. Then someone by my side exclaimed, Look! It's gone. Then somebody on said, gone where? Gone from sight. 
And at that very moment, somebody on the other side said, look, it's coming home. And on Friday, August the 11th, the ship of life sailed for Minister DeWitt Johnson one last time, unloaded, reloaded, then with new cargo, sailed on to its final voice. And as his soul to wing flight from this world, somebody on said, look, he's gone. But there were others on the other side waiting for the approach as the melodious voices of the angel choir said, glad to be in the service one more time. Look, he's coming home. Therefore, we give praise because no more crying, no more suffering, no more pain, no more sickness. And if he was here, he would just simply say, it is well, it is well with my soul. May God bless you. We have on white, but we're not crackers. <laughs> she said she part cracker. Well, I guess I am too. It's good to be here on today. Celebrate a man, a wonderful man of God. Let's clap our hands for Elder DeWitt. I have my watch on for fashion. It, the battery is out, so, but I can tell time. I'm going to take a minute, and Dr. Eric is going to take a minute. I was sitting over there, and the scripture came to mind in Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter and the 11th verse, and it clearly says that the race isn't given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endureth until the end. I'm so glad to know, have known Elder DeWitt Johnson as a brother, as a friend, as a true man of God that was serious about his life in front of everyone and privately. And he's an example that so many of us need because the Bible says in the last days, many shall fall from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I'm so glad in these times that DeWitt did never fail from the faith. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I just want to say this, that... This gathering, and I call it the gathering of the giants, because what Elder DeWitt has done to us and to gospel music is insurmountable. He is a giant in gospel. And as we celebrate his home going, this is the conclusion of the matter, that DeWitt's life is talking to us today. It is about making peace with our past so that we won't spend the rest of our life trying to get back there. Because turn to somebody and say, that ship has passed. One thing that Elder DeWitt showed us is there is strength to bloom where you are and to prosper where you are and to have good at being who you are. There were a lot of talents that this man of God had and that he saw in each one of us. And as his coat passed us, and as you said, looking like a 007 agent, as he walked through the crowd, his discernment could pick out the different gifts that was in the room. And he wasn't just content with shining himself. He was only content when he brought the whole vineyard to the show and allowed every one of our gifts to be manifested so that the world would see that God is real and that God uses ordinary folk like you and me. So turn to somebody today and say, he's touched me with the life that Elder D. Witt has shared with us and thank you family for allowing him to share his gift with us god be blessed with you and may the gift of elder dewitt johnson go throughout this world through the gifts that we have in our lives today god bless you god bless you
All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. people said amen. amen. Trust me, I won't be as long as anything else. Amen. I'm going to say what I need to say and send us out of here. Amen. As the pastor of this church, as growing up, you know, y'all done called all these other preachers. I'm the only one from here, it seemed like, in this city. And they say, why you do everybody's eulogies? I say, I'm the only one to know them. <laughs> in the music ministry, I have been honored to share the eulogies for three greats that this city has lost. Um, the great maestro himself, Derek Lee, to my dear friend and big sister, Connie Donnell, and now to share the eulogy for DeWitt Johnson. I'm doing DeWitt's eulogy because I'm his pastor. And he was very um, straightforward with that. Uh, regardless of where he went or where his life took him, he made it very clear that he was a member of Mount Gilead. Amen. He sung here during our homecoming this year. We had all the singing families in this church to share with us. And DeWitt led us. About three weeks ago, he sent me a text message. Did y'all used to get those text messages, those little quotes or something that he would be sending to you? And you didn't know where to respond or read it. You just got it, right? What a blessing it was to have him as a member of this church. I listened to this choir uh, and this music that we have been blessed to listen to. It takes us back to music that we have forgotten about and worship Amen. that we have forgotten about. Amen. Uh, DeWitt represents so much. Uh, to us. I grew up, most people know, in South Nashville. I was at Tabernacle Baptist Church, Reverend Hunt. I grew up on an old R.L. Evans, and then Reverend Hunt took his place when Pastor Evans died. And DeWitt played for, I want to say it was the Angelic Choir. That was another musician, some of y'all might remember. Uh, was it Thornell Dinwiddie? Thornell Dinwiddie, all them. Yeah, that's old school. You got to be from Nashville, amen. But to have the opportunity to share with them, and of course, Leon Corder, uh, who was a great in this church. Uh, family is uh, one of the pillars of his church, and, and so we are grateful and thankful for this opportunity uh, to stand and, and to share. Um, as his pastor, before I eulogize, well, I'm not going to eulogize him, saying that was the eulogy. I'm just going to preach. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to preach. That was an incredible reflection of his life that she has given him. But I want us to celebrate uh, not DeWitt. I want us to celebrate Troy and Orlando on today. Will you celebrate them? Come on. You know, when people transition at this level, uh, at, you know, with this notoriety, family can get weird. I've been doing this 37 years. Y'all get weird. And uh, when they called and told me that he had transitioned and um, I called Orlando to talk to him, uh, just smooth selling, and he has, he has put this worship together the way DeWitt would have wanted it. Amen. Amen. And it's a reflection of, of his life. Only DeWitt, my fifth wedding anniversary was yesterday. My wife said, where are we going? I said, I'm going to a funeral on Saturday. That's where I'm going. 
Yeah, she said, okay, I get it, but if only for D. Witt. In the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 40 through 45, I won't, I won't challenge you uh, or bel uh, uh, hold too much of your time by reading the text. It's the text of a leper uh, whose life has been touched by Jesus. And, and that's what I want to talk about this morning, this afternoon. I've been touched. That's what I want to talk about. Lord, open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear your word this day. For D. Witt, this is what really matters. It is the preaching of the gospel. So now, Lord, pour in me and through me and out of me the gift of expository preaching so that men and women might know the continuation of your redemption and your steadfast love for us. Forgive me of my sins and thank you for salvation by grace through faith, a gift from you, not from my own works, lest I should brag or boast. Lord, take full control of my heart, mind, and body and use it for your own glorification. Those things I've counted to myself, I count now loss unto thee. And we ask it all in the strong name of Jesus and God's people said together, amen, amen. Unlike Matthew and Luke, the Gospel of Mark omits a birth narrative with a genealogy or any other intentional Jewish identity markers in his Gospel. He does not conclude his Gospel with a global agenda to go into all the world and make disciples. Instead, the story ends with an instruction to the disciples to return to Galilee. Why? Because in Mark's gospel, Jesus is touching the lives of anyone who needs transformation. Such is the case in Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. Jesus moved with pity, stretched out his hand, and touched a leprous man whose life had been defined and destroyed by a title given to him. And immediately, leprosy left him. Jesus charges the man to say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded. But the Bible says, but he went out and began to talk freely about what Jesus has done. This miracle is an encouragement to us because it suggests that whatever sickness may hurt us or skepticism that might hinder us or systems that may hold us in an undesired season of isolation and humiliation, here's the point. Jesus can transform us from a person with a title to a person with a testimony. I think I ought to say that one again. Doesn't matter what you've been through in your life, if Jesus touches you, he will transition you from being a person with a title to a person with a testimony. Leprosy is an infectious disease that causes severe disfiguring skin sores and nerve damage in the arms and legs. Today, about 180,000 people worldwide are infected with leprosy, most in Africa and Asia, according to the World Health Organization. A slow growing type of bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy. The main symptom of leprosy is disfiguring skin sores, lumps or bumps that do not go away after several weeks or months. In biblical history, this sickness was a sickness of death. We could better understand leprosy in the Bible by comparing it to our reaction to COVID-19. In Leviticus chapter 13, an individual with leprosy is unclean. His clothes shall be rent and his head bare and he shall put a covering upon his lips and shall cry unclean, unclean. And all the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean, he shall dwell alone, without the camp shall be his habitation. Hey, they did not quarantine if you had leprosy for five days, but they quarantined for the rest of their lives. But Jesus moved with pity, stretched out his hand, 
and touch the untouchable. And his life moved from having a title to having a testimony. Jesus says to him, I'm almost there. Jesus says to him, don't say nothing, but go show yourself to the priest. But he couldn't go another father, what my grandmama would say. And he went and told everybody the good news what God had done to him. Dewitt represents the leper in this text. Dewitt's life reminds us of someone whose life had been touched by the Lord Jesus Christ. What does a life touched by Jesus look like? Dewitt reminds us that if your life has been touched by Jesus, it is a life of faith. A leper came to him, verse 40, imploring him and kneeling to him, said, if you will, you can make me clean. Faith simply believes that Jesus can. He says, if you will, you can make me clean. My words to somebody here this morning, not for DeWitt, but for us, and that is, if you are unhappy with where you are, faith makes a difference. The old folks said, faith is the key. Prayer is the key. And faith unlocks the door. Hey man, faith is acting like you got what you ain't got, so when you get it, nobody know you never had it in the first place. You would have never known that DeWitt grew up from the bottom. You would have never known, I wish I had help in here, that DeWitt had any kind of struggles because he carried himself as a child of the king. He walked by faith and not by sight. Only faith can bring you from the bottom to being in millions homes on TV. Only faith can set you down with an ink pen and a piano and score the words, I'm glad to be in God's service. And everybody sings that. Pete D. Witt reminds us that a light touched by Jesus is a light by faith. Yeah. You know, we live in a day and age where we walk by sight and not by faith. We like to put it all together and manage everything. And then at the end, when it comes out the way we want it to, we want to say, look what God has done. But the real life of faith is when you don't know what tomorrow brings, when you don't know if you're going to get up in the morning, when you don't know if your children are going to be okay. You don't know what's going to happen in this world, but you know that Jesus can. Oh, you ought to touch somebody this afternoon and tell them, faith means Jesus can. I don't know if he will, but he can. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. I'm almost done here. That's the second word. The second word in this text is the word, if your life has been touched by Jesus, it's a life of fellowship. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said, see that you say nothing, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. The difference between DeWitt, and I'm going to say this in slowly, and most Christian talented singers is that y'all have become artists. We got to sign riders for y'all to come and sing for us. You got to check your team and your schedule to see if you are available. But DeWitt reminded us that when God gives you a gift, it's not for your own glory. When God gives you a gift, it's not for you to make a name for yourself. When God gives you a gift, all the glory belongs to God. I wish I had time to stay there. I wish I had time to stay there. He was never too big. Some of y'all done got too big. We can't call you up to sing a song anymore. You're too big. Hey, man, hey, man, we can't ask you, can you help out on homecoming or, hey, you're too big. Can't ask you to just sit in the choir and just sing without a microphone. You're too big. But for DeWitt, you didn't have to know his name. You didn't have to give him a mic on several Sundays at Mount Gillen. He sat in the choir and sung, amen, on the second or the third row with no mic in his hand because he never got too big. Yeah. 
Y'all want to know why there's no glory when you sing? You don't want to know why you can't move and usher the people into the presence of God when you sing? Because if you want the God's presence and your presence can't dwell at the same time. And if it's going to be about God, I wish I had help in here. Then we sang to the glory of God. This leper, I'm done. I'm in my seat. This leper, I'm done. I'm in my seat. But the Bible says that Jesus touched him. Oh, McCarroll, that's good news right there. That Jesus Christ will touch the untouchable. I know some of y'all in here looking like you deserve what you got. You deserve where you live. You deserve what you drive. You deserve what you wear. But, but Mark reminds us with this leper and Dewitt's life reminds us that we all got what we got because Jesus touched us. Oh, that's a good way to go home now. We have what we have, not because of our last name, not because of what church we go to, not because of our denominational affiliation. We are where we are because the hands of Jesus touched us. Have I got a witness in here? There ought to be about a hundred of you all in here that could testify to that. Hey man, I was seeking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. Seeking to rise no more. Let's go Tonto, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. Yes, sir, and from the waters, he lifted me. Now, safe am I. Is it anybody this afternoon that can testify that the Lord, yes, sir, he touched me. Have I got a witness in here? If you're not too cute, then stand on your feet. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am what I am. I got what I got because Jesus touched me. Put running in my feet. Put clapping in my hand. Have I got a witness in here? Let me close by saying, if your life has been touched by Jesus, not only is it a light of faith, not only is it a life of fellowship, but last thing, it's a life of praise. And I'm gonna close right there. Because if you knew d it didn't have to be a hundred folk. Didn't have to be a thousand folk where two or three was gathered together in his name. d would put a praise on it. The Bible says that after Jesus touched him, the Bible says that leper started going back toward the priest. But he looked at his hands and his hands looked new. Yes, sir. He looked at his feet and his feet did too. He looked at it, listened to his voice. He got his voice back. And the Bible says he wouldn't told everybody what Jesus has done for him. I'm in my seat now. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, tell it. Tell it. Tell the good news of what Jesus has done. Is it anybody here? Got a testimony. Look at your name and say, neighbor, I am a living testimony. God's been so good to me. Every day, he keeps on blessing me. So we ought to take some time to glorify the Lord today. Anybody know that he touched you? for real, but grab your neighbor by both hands, look your neighbor in the face, and say, neighbor, I've been searching, 
some of y'all don't know what just happened. D-Wit just happened. He was a praiser. He believed in blessing the Lord. And that's what he did too. Who gonna sing this? Said, I've been searching for a long, long time. Said, I've been trying to find a little peace of mind. Oh, but then one day, have I got to win it? Jesus passed my way and he touched me. From the top again, and we're going out on this. Anybody know that? Said, I'm going to say it again. Said, I've been searching for a long, long time. I've been trying to find, yes I have, a little peace of mind. Oh, but then one day, Jesus came and passed my way and Lord, he touched me. Come on, we out of here. We gonna just sing the vamp of it. Everybody, let me hear you say touch. Have I got a witness in the house? 